بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبح اسم ربك الأعلى Before we start the explanation of the verses, let's highlight some virtues of the surah. Surah Al-Ala was revealed in Mecca before the migration of the Messenger of Allah to Medina. Imam Al-Bukhari rahimahullah recorded from Al-Bara bin Azib that he said, The first people to come to us in al Madina, from the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam were Mus'ab bin Umayr and Ibn Umm Maktoum who taught us the Quran then Amr, Bilal and Sa'ad came then Umar bin Al Khattab came with a group of 20 people after which the Prophet himself came. I have not seen the people of Al Madina appear with anything more than their happiness with his coming, that is, with the coming of the Messenger of Allah to Medina. This was reached to such an extent that I saw the children and little ones saying, This is the Messenger of Allah who has come. Thus, he came, but he did not come until after I had already recited and learned how to recite Surah Al-A'la, as well as other surahs similar to it. Furthermore, Imam Ahmad bin Ambal rahimahullah, recorded from an Uman bin Bashir that the Messenger of Allah used to recite Surah Al-A'la and Al-Ghashiyah in the two eight prayers. If the eight prayer fell on a Friday, he would recite them both in prayers, that is, he would recite al Goshia and al ala in eight prayer and in Juma prayers. Additionally, Abu Dawood Allah, narrated from Ibn Abbas radiallahu an that when the Prophet وسلم, recited the words Sabbisma Rabbika Al-A'la the first verse of the Surah he would say Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la Glory be to my Lord the Most High This narration shows that we are allowed to glorify Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala whenever we recite verses that point to that in Sunnah prayers such as written. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in the understanding of his verses. Till next time we say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dunia and Biladin.